Well, good afternoon. Dave Morris here in the Oklahomans Video Studio, joined by this lady, Lynn Kramer. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing quite well. We're talking about Lyric Theater's latest production. It is Assassins, and it runs through uh, February 26th, I believe. That's correct. Sunday. Uh, and you actually know you more of offstage directing, choreographing, teaching, instructing, mm -hmm. inspiring. Oh, but you're, on, so. <laughs> but you're on stage in this production. I'm on, I'm on stage. Michael asked me quite some time ago to play... Uh, Michael Barron, the director? Michael Barron, the director, okay. to play Sarah Jane Moore, who tried to off Gerald Ford in the lovely city of San Francisco did back, you, in, back how, in hippie days. How much days. did you know about her? At the oh, time? I knew a lot about her, but yeah. then I'm a, I'm, I can't say I would have ever known a lot about her had the musical not come into my purview. I guess that's what I'm getting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like it, we, we all sort of know Hinckley and Moore and those who are sure. roughly associated yeah. with their president. And, and I guess we should set up Assassins. I'll let you set up Assassins. Oh, okay. Uh, Assassins basically is the story of not all people who have tried to commit, uh, tried to kill presidents, but a group of the more famous uh, individuals who, for one reason or another, attempted attempted the assassination of one of our illustrious presidents. Some were successful, many were not. Sarah Jane Moore was one who was not. Uh, and what's unique about her, I think, is the fact that she and Squeaky Fromm, who was a girlfriend of mass murderer Charles Manson, who killed Sharon Tate, people might remember that if they're my age or a little older, uh, both tried to kill Gerald Ford in a span of four days, which is really odd. Two women, the only women in the show, the only women who tried to kill the same president, and both were incredibly unsuccessful. <laughs> um, but, but again, the show came into my purview because I'm a Sondheim fan. So once I went to see the show, then your interest is piqued, and I now know more about them. Of course, all of us as actors try to do our research so we know about the character we're playing because obviously there's going to be changes by a composer, a lyricist, a book writer, you know, about those changes. We're, oh, we're there we go. right there. There we are. Um, so uh, let's talk a little bit more yeah. about that. What sort of research would you go into to learn more about this character? Well, I have read an entire book on Sarah Jane Moore. It was just fascinating. And not all of the material in the musical is accurate. Obviously, dramatic license is taken because in this particular production, Sarah Jane and Squeaky are comic relief. How often do you get to say that? Uh, it, it just throughout your life, well, how often have you said that? <laughs> to say I'm comic relief every day in my classes. Or no, I'm kidding. For that matter. Uh, it, the thing about it, it's it's very dark. It's very heavy, and it needs comic levity. Okay, and well, we, that would make sense. Yeah, and we offer that component. But it's it's actually she was actually a. a really serious political act activist of the time. And her attempt at killing uh, Gerald Ford was thwarted by a civilian who batted her hand away, which caused the gun obviously to go off in the air and save Gerald Ford's life. But she had attempted it the day before and her sights were off on her gun. It's a very interesting story and tedious to tell, but she was unsuccessful as were most. Booth, Hinckley, um, uh, uh, and probably Lee Harvey Oswald are your three most famous assassins. The in, most notorious of the yeah, assassins. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and ones that people have a little bit of knowledge of. But Hinckley was equally unsuccessful. I mean, he shot at the president five times and missed every time. We, we laugh. <laughs> we laugh, but it's, you know. And, and that actually is told with levity by the proprietor in the show. So uh, th there's moments, but it's dark humor. And uh, that makes it a little, a little edgier. She's Lynn Kramer. She stars as Sarah Jane Moore, one of the assassins in Assassins, or would-be assassin, mm -hmm. in Assassins, which uh, plays at Lyric Theater at the Plaza. It runs through February 26th. Um, can you shoot again? Like in real life, can it, Lynn well, Kramer? Well, no, interesting, interesting that you've asked. I'm a daughter of a big game hunter, and okay. you think that I would have, but I never did. Now, never first have. Saturday of rehearsal, he took, Michael Barron took all of us to the gun range. Really? We were at H&H gun range, and we fired the likely the simil a similar gun to what our character would be shooting. Obviously, when you're talking about the 1800s and the early 1900s, you don't have yeah. guns like that anymore, unless they're in collections. But I shot a 38. Sarah owned a 44, but I shot a 38. And 
political stance aside, it is a, we need to understand the exhilaration of what that feels like so that we can more accurately portray the characters. Because Sarah shoots more than anyone in the show. Her gun is going off all the time. <laughs> and she's played kind of like a bumbling idiot with a gun. And in her life, she actually was not. But in the course of the show, my gun constantly going off and it's a comic moment, a comedic moment. Sarah, please control your gun. Yes. Sarah, it, it, your, your gun, please. It's completely <laughs> like that. And so what's fascinating is that we all went in and I think we were all, all of us, were surprised at how we felt when we shot. I didn't see anyone back away. I saw people, every one of my cast members, try again, go for a different gun, try to get a different feeling. I want to try the rifle, the handgun. It was really interesting. Uh, I'm surprised, my, I surprised myself. That is a, another layer of research It's right another there, right? layer of research. And you have to know because this, we use starter pistols in the show. One gentleman fires all the shots. So we are, because you, you literally can't with your stage base point a gun and literally fire it. It's, there's too many audience members. It's, I would be fearful as an audience member <laughs> if the barrel of the gun was coming at me and we were, you know, warned that shooting blanks, it would still scare the life out of you. Right. So. We point and we react when the gun goes off, but the gun is being shot up or down at the back of the stage by one individual who's playing a role in the show. He's called the proprietor. All right, very good. And he good. facilitates the action of the show. All right, so this actually opened February 8th. We mentioned uh, you still yeah. have your opportunity through the 26th. How's it gone so far? Well, we've had wonderful audiences and far larger than I had imagined, so we're very excited That's and people great. need to get tickets. Uh, we do a Wednesday, Thursday show at 7.30, and then Friday and Saturday at 8, Saturday at 2, Sunday at 5, and they've got two weeks left to go. Two weeks left to go. The show runs without an intermission. Without and, an intermission. And I have to ask you something you mentioned before. Uh, sure. Uh, no applause. How does that work? Well, it, 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 the, the original show was done in a carnival atmosphere, and uh, every scene, actors came on and exited the stage via each scene. Michael took this and turned it upside down and left every actor on stage for the entire one hour and 45 minutes. No one leaves stage really? ever. Yeah. And we focus on every story played by an alternate character. So our laser focus helps the audience focus. And it is played so that there is a direct segue between every scene. So applause, it's not convenient. Just we never work. take a breath. We just go. Huh. And the first time the audience can applaud is when the show is completely over and we go to our first and only blackout. That's, it's always cool. It, to it's see just how cool. It's, it's a really like fascinating this. way to tell the, tell the story. And we're all. It's pretty yummy. Especially <laughs> really when you wonder. have a, a good collection of creative people. Yeah, and, and we have Michael a, Barron certainly knows yeah. what he's doing. It's a, it's a, it's an exceptional cast of people and representatives from UCO, OCU, and OU, which is pretty great. Well, perfect segue. Uh, I know you from the OCU days. Mm -hmm. You spent about what, twelve years? Twelve now? years? I, wow, twelve years. You're absolutely right. Um, yeah. And I mentioned teaching choreographing. Mm -hmm. uh, you were in the theater dance. Area, yeah, I was right? in school. I was school of dance at, at at OCU, and there for a long time before I made the the change to OU. And again, we're I'm in a musical theater division now, so okay. it's a, it's a little different. So what do you do now? Uh, well, I train I train actors for the Broadway stage. We train uh, train them as vocalists, as actors, and as dancers. And we have a lot of people working in the business. We have a lot of Broadway students. It's great. Uh, we interviewed Kelly O'Hara when she came through yeah. uh, a few months ago, and she was mentioning your name, that it was good Aww. to catch back up with you. Uh, <laughs> nice. How is it from your perspective? Proud. <laughs> I mean, come whether, on. Whether it's Kelly or any student. It, 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 it's hard to explain the pride that you feel as an individual, just as a teacher watching your student, your former student on stage. There's a pride that I, I can't begin to describe, but also what it does is it reinforces the educational process at, at OCU, at, at OU, it, regardless. It reinforces what we do and it creates a network for our students so they are supported and taken care of no matter where they go, by other students, by former faculty, whatever that network is. It's, it's just a nurturing environment and that's one of the reasons our students are so successful. I think. 
Uh, not to mention the, the really wonderful training they get at OU, because they get often good training <laughs> at OU, if I do say so myself. They really, really do. But it's just, it's proud. I'm, it's, you're just proud. You're so proud. Well, good for you. Yeah. Congrats on all that. Now, Thanks. when you travel, do you still try to go show, see shows various places? Yeah, I, um, I, I make several trips to New York uh, every year, and I see lots and lots and lots of shows. And almost every time I go, I get to see students in shows. For example, currently opening, or ha has opened or about to open, Miss Saigon, Sunset Boulevard. I've got students in both of those shows. And uh, Well, that makes it way more special. It, it, it does. As a matter of fact, Barry Busby, who's in Sunset Boulevard, just sent me a picture standing next to Steven Spielberg because he came to see the show. Cool. And there's just wow factor. You know, there's, there's that wow factor. It's great. Uh, and then... Our, as our profile, as our student profile increases, it enables us then to bring big names to our campus. Uh, Warren Carlisle, who did Hello Dolly, was did a residency for us less than six months ago. He's the choreographer on Hello Dolly with Bette Midler. And Susan Stroman will be gracing our, our uh, campus May 3rd, 4th, and 5th of this year. So cool. all of that is wonderful. And Kelly was instrumental, Kelly and Kristen Chenoweth were instrumental in my meeting the kinds of people I needed to meet to write the book that I wrote, which was Creating Musical Theater, which then in turn gives our students more opportunity and in turn gets the bigger name people here to see what we do. Everything for the student, everything to promote student education and betterment. Um, if we can do it, we try to do it. She's Lynn Kramer, <laughs> a fascinating person to talk with, interview, and joke with for that matter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is great to see you. Congrats on all the success, Thank uh, you. both on the stage and off the stage with all the training that you do. Thanks. We appreciate your time. Thank you. It's, it's a pleasure to be here and to promote such an incredibly good show. I hope people will come out and see it. It's really different. They should take a chance. It is Assassins. It's playing at uh, the Plaza Theater. Lyric Theater's production uh, runs through February 26. Big thanks to Michael Bratcher, as always, for his help sitting off stage, if you will. For Paige, for producing. Lynn, thanks so much for your time. Sure, Appreciate it. Sure, absolutely. My pleasure.